Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Control Alt Silent here with another first look for the channel. In today's episode, we are going to take a look into Hard Space Shipbreaker. This is a shipbreaking uh, astronaut simulator where you get to take on the shoes of somebody who breaks down spaceships in what I would like to coin as anti puzzle games. So instead of putting everything together, you get to take it apart one piece at a time. So without any further ado, we're going to jump into a new game, and I will be back with you after the opening cutscene. Wasn't that just a cute cutscene? I don't know why. I, I just kind of tugs at the heartstrings. Um, the whole motif of, you know, a hardworking man going to take care of his family. I don't know. I'm probably getting a little sappy about that, but uh, I just I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, also, uh, while I was doing the earlier recording for this, I realized that the first uh, 90 or so minutes of the game has about 85 or so minutes of dialogue and tutorials to go through. So, in order to not bore you guys to absolute tears, I've decided to um, just jump into a free play game that I unlocked the first time I ever tried this game about six months ago, and just kind of show you the ropes, show you some gameplay, and if you like and want to see any more, just let me know in the comments below. But, let's go on and get right into it. Alright, here we are our workstation and the machines are starting up oh love to see it this game is just really cool i like the way that it's all laid out and it gives you some um it gives you kind of an inside look at something that we may never see in our lifetime but maybe maybe we won't wipe ourselves off the face of the planet before we get to uh to technology like this all right so the basics uh, WASD moves you around like this, yeah? Shift drops you down. Space brings you up. Q and E roll you. Pressing them together brings you to the brakes. This is your ship. Your beautiful spaceship that you paid for with your own money that you're going to tear down into various parts and put them in one of three different locations. So you'll see the panel says processor right above it, right in the middle of the screen. If you go up to the light, it says barge. And if we find some other pieces, they'll say furnace. The processor is this bad boy right here. It uh, can break down things that are made out of nanocarbon and some other materials, basically things that don't melt down but can be reprocessed. The furnace is this glowing orifice of heat that, uh, that can melt down anything that can be remelted down 
scrap. Most of that is aluminum and whatnot. And then the um, these things that say barge on them, these are complete components that can be reused once they are detached and thrown down here in this giant cushion. Um, there's a little grid force field in it. That's a dampening field, and it can take care of all of these. So when you grab them, you can just fling them right in there, and they don't get broken. But they can get resold, and they're worth they're worth a few credits, it seems. Um, so this gun that you have in your hand, this is your tether gun. You can grab things that are not strongly attached and tear them off. You can, with left click, with right click, you can reel things in to be closer to you and hit you in the face if you're not careful. And with the F button, you can shoot a little Van Der Waals field, which, um, which will fling whatever you have right in front of you. So that's kind of cool. There's also a automated tether system which will go, let's see, down here. First, I'm going to connect the automated tether. So grab this with right click and pull it down there. That tether is going to automatically pull this down when it's detached from the main mass. And right here, turning on my light with the five key, I'm going to switch using the number two over to my laser cutter. It has two modes, stinger laser, which can melt these yellow pieces and uh, s like skill saw laser that can cut big swaths across stuff. But if this laser hits anything that's valuable, it'll destroy it and you'll lose money. So we'll switch over to our stinger laser, melt this off. And then there that tether is gonna pull that piece into the barge. And that is super useful for, like we saw in the prologue, chaining together a bunch of pieces that can be flung all the same direction. They can kind of create a train of salvage that's just flying into either the processor or the barge or the, um, the furnaces. And uh, uh, it's just, it's kind of a cool feature. Uh, it also can move things heavier than you can normally move yourself because they anchor two points together and pull them together rather than uh, using your own mass to, you know, counterbalance. That whole first laws of physics thing opposite reactions yeah you have to kind of worry about that in this game um i did forget to mention there is a photosensitivity warning at the beginning of this game uh if you suffer from epilepsy or any other kind of photosensitivity this game might not be for you granted you do kind of have to screw up in order for there to be big flashing lights and sounds however i just i don't want anybody to endanger themselves just for the sake of watching a video if you are sensitive to that uh please just be advised also, the game is in zero G, so anybody who suffers from motion sickness, this game might be particularly triggering, and while I will try and keep the crazy spins down to a minimum, as long as I don't blow the ship up in my face, um, I, I will do my best, but if it does start to bother you, just feel free to, to move on. Again, I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable with these videos. So, one more little bit of explanation, and then we'll just start tearing this ship apart. I'll I won't probably tear the whole thing apart for you guys, but I'll tear apart some of the main interesting components and just give you a little taste. And then if you like it and you want to see more, just let me know. So next we're going to hit the T key. And this is going to scan the ship. And it's going to tell us that there are these yellow cut points. There are orange paneling, light paneling. Those are typically made of aluminum and those will go in the furnace over there. The uh, square boxes are compartments or like cargo bays and stuff and if they're green they're pressurized and if they're red they're depressurized the problem being i am currently in a depressurized environment outside of the ship so if i just cut a hole in the side of the ship it's going to explode in my face and worse if i'm inside the ship and i cut a hole it's going to suck me through that little hole that i just cut and i can't remember the last time that i enjoyed fitting through a quarter size hole so uh we're not going to screw around with that too much also, the blue paneling and the structural paneling, those are all nanocarbon. So those get flung into these wonderful processors over here. Now, scrolling down, once we're in this menu, you can actually see the other systems. So fuel systems are red. They can explode. 
coolant systems are blue, and if you puncture them, they'll hit you with coolant, and you'll freeze solid, and then you'll shatter, like uh, I guess you should. The purple systems have radiation in them. This is a reactor, and the reactor will explode as soon as we pull it out, so we need to be able to fling it down here as soon as we detach it. So that's kind of fun to extract. We'll probably extract that for you. And then this one doesn't actually have a reactant coolant, a reactant pump system, which you have to worry about this exploding while you keep something else from not overheating. But we don't have one of those, so that's actually why I picked this one is because it doesn't have all of the pieces, so it's not super complicated, but it's fun. Scrolling down again, we have the objects. Pick up objects like the blue ones. Those are consumables. In the base game, you have to worry about your oxygen, your health, your O2, and your fuel, like you see at the very bottom of my screen right now. Um, you can actually, instead of paying for them over there at that little wrench, which they're expensive, they're like 15 grand a pop, um, you can actually just steal them out of the ship that you're tearing apart. The purple or bright uh, magenta pieces, those are parts that you can collect. In the story mode, you get a spaceship that you have to repair in order to uh, basically escape your job. Um, and you can pull pieces out of uh, compartments as they're floating around. You can also tear down certain electronics like door panels and get like wires and stuff. Uh, so you do have those options. And then you'll see in uh, sort of this greenish yellow, there are the objects. Those are things that you can just pull out, but it doesn't tell you specifically if they're explosive like this one does. Um, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Now let's get into tearing this thing apart. I'm going to start with the outside components just because um, they work for me. and They're a quick dollar here and there. If you ever try to grab onto a piece and it doesn't move like this, uh, you notice that little square in the very middle of my screen is not filling up. If it does that, that means you just gotta weld it or cut it off. Like that. Then we grab it. We grab a tether and tell it to go down there and then we can forget it and just move on to the next thing. Now this is uh, pressurized, so I'm gonna go inside and depressurize it, which uh, is difficult, but not impossible. So let's go over here to the door panel, press F to activate the airlock. And I'm already too close to the reactor. You see my screen glitching? That's radiation that's uh, that's in the way, but hopefully we can. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me all right in this helmet. I, I know it's kind of a kind of funky sounding, but I digress. My uh, my microphone isn't the same uh, as the one I can use when I don't have to be in a spacesuit. So I hope it's okay. If you guys don't like it, I'll I can do some post processing on the next video. If you want a next video, and we'll go from there. All right. So this right here. This atmospheric regulator, if I hit this, it'll depressurize this compartment for us. Alright, now we're going to hit our scanner again, and it shows that the cockpit is depressurized, which is perfect. Now we need to figure out how to depressurize the rest of the ship. And actually, I think I'm going to do something stupid just to show you what happens if you depressurize the ship. So we're going to come over here into this corner. We're going to press the X key to grab a hold of the, or the Z key. Z key is left hand, X is right. And we're going to depressurize this entire compartment by opening this door. And this is really stupid. It might kill us, but uh, hold on to your butts. Don't hit me in the face. Oh crap. Oh. Okay. Now we just have to get out of this hole. That was, oh, nope, I destroyed a regulator. See that thing, how it's got no health? It's really, I know it's really hard to see, but um, that is now worthless in the barge, but I'm still going to throw it in there for the sake of argument. Now let's see. Is everything, the airlock is the only thing that's not, uh, not pressurized. So let's go down here. We're in the bowels of the ship, and we are going to cut some of the paneling and expose some of the siding for you. Now, this nanocarbon, will bounce your laser off of it. And if that laser bounces and hits one of these tanks, like this coolant tank, it'll explode. So you just gotta be kinda careful. I'm gonna grab this. And did that move? Pressing F to check and see if that worked, and it didn't. So there's more pieces. And 
And you know how when you're doing this and you see the sparks fly off of it? Those will also catch the tanks on fire, so you gotta be careful. Ah! Oh, I almost hit that tank. Did you see that? That was close. Alright, uh, is this, is this free now? Oh, yes! Okay. So, this goes in the processor. We're gonna grab that and do that. And we're gonna scan them really quick because if you see any electrical... No, 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 no. Don't pull me with you. Stop, 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 stop. I don't wanna go in the processor. Stop! Stop. Brakes. Okay. Whew. That was close. If you accidentally slip past that red line in the processor over there in the furnace, you will, um, you'll get processed. And, um, I can say that's not a very pleasant experience, and the game actually makes you scream really loudly when, uh, when that happens. So, uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that for you guys on, on a video. Um, so, uh, sorry, as I was saying, if you go into the systems and you see anything green, those typically have to go down here in the green... Um, barge, so you can scan these pieces right before you throw them into the processors, just to make sure you're not wasting any money. Okay, now we're getting a better look at the ship. Oh, and that process... Damn. That reactor is really stuck in there tight. I am probably going to have to... Let's see what I can do about getting that out. We're going to blow the cockpit open. Poor choice of words, I'm sorry. The 14 year old in me uh, uh, didn't catch my mouth quite quick enough. Okay, we're gonna get that there and see how it says this is furnace. So this is aluminum frame with glass and that is pure furnace fodder. And you can just fling that in there and as long as it eventually goes past that red line, it'll get sucked in. There's little gravity wells in these. So, um, okay, I don't know if don't hit me in the face you can if you accidentally get hit in the face too hard it will crack your uh, helmet and you'll run out of oxygen and even in the free play you can never die version um it'll kill you which is i suppose realistic but also kind of a pain in the butt throw that down there let's grab that atmospheric regulator that seems securely attached and that's a soft crate. So that was flammable if you hit it with a torch. Okay, this was not the way to detach all the pieces. Those are right here. So switch to our stinger. Let's get a little closer. And we can just tag both of these like that. And Okay, so that removed this piece. So what we're going to do because that reactor will explode about 10 seconds after I remove it from its uh, its housing. Come on, back up, back up. No, no, careful, don't hit the reactor. Go this way, yes, yes, perfect, okay. Now once the reactor is more or less clear, is that another system? No, those are structural, okay, go back there. We're gonna grab the reactor, and now it's gonna explode unless we do this, and punch it in the face with science. <laughs> okay, we'll get that out of our way, and then let's see, um, as far as other interesting things, we're gonna do, ah, yeah. So this is an interesting, but it just bugs me that those stick out. I'm gonna throw that down there. These engines are super fun to do. They're actually a little bit of a time trial. And so I'll show you one of those and uh, maybe I'll show you both of them, but come on, you come off and go that way. So there's one weld point right here. And we're gonna grab this one too. Set that to go over there like that. And this one right here. Oh, and these little nubs right here, these are cooling canisters that you can pick up. They're parts for your spaceship in the storyline. Um, get these other two things out of the way. Grab that one, and that one, and 
tether them together and then tether that one over there. So those will get out of my way. And then, why am I still getting radiation? That's weird. Okay, so that one popped off. And that one popped off. And we're going to tether them together and then tether it down there. So those will get out of our way too. Now here's where it gets challenging. This uh, engine right here, these quasar thrusters, these are filled with fuel still. There is no way to get behind them without cutting them out, which starts a massive engine fire. So we have to cut these four points, pull this out, which I'm actually going to do like this. So it's now being pulled on. When I cut it, that is going to pull it out of place, and then I'm going to have to dash down a, a um, hallway of flaming fuel lines in order to hit the fuel shutoff. But the engine kind of splits apart, kind of cool when we do it. So, three, two, one. Okay, so it's pulling out. And now I just gotta get in there and turn off the fuel lines. Ah! Oof, that was close. It almost got me. No, 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 no. Ah. All right. Whew. Fuel lines purged, flames disconnected, and then the casing for the engines just pop apart. And now I can take all of the pieces out of it. See, there's fuel, there's some lights, there's some coolant tanks that kind of stuff. And then this guy, if we press Y, it cancels the um, the tethers. We can grab that and just tell it to go away. And uh, I'll just do the other one really quick and then we'll call it good. And I hope you guys really did enjoy this first look. Uh, this has been Hard Space Shipbreaker again. When the game first came out, it was so buggy I couldn't even play it. I actually got a refund on it originally, I'm not going to lie, uh, but after its 1.0 release and they worked out all of the bugs about six months after, um, it's actually turned into a really decent game. It's really cathartic and fun to play and, okay, run, 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 come on, oh crap, ow, and touchdown, perfect, all right. Now we're going to drop out of the bottom of this and uh, take a look at our handiwork. Uh, it looks like we haven't really done anything. At least on this side. Then on the other side, it looked like a gutted fish. But uh, So that's going to be it, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me in this little scrapyard outage that is Hard Space Shipbreaker. If you like the content and you want to see more, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And I think there's like a bell icon or something that I'm supposed to remind you about that also lets you know that I'm going to be around uh, and I'm uploading. I don't know what my upload schedule is going to be right now, but I do appreciate everybody who has bothered watching me taking time out of your day. Uh, as always, links in the description below for any of my uh, socials as soon as I have those up and running. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for staying to this point in the video. A huge shout out to Fisk for his Fisk Beats music, which was featured in today's video. Links to his channel in the description. Also, I'm working on starting a Patreon as well as a Discord for anybody who is interested. Those links will be available as soon as I figure it out. But without wasting any more of your time, here are some videos that YouTube thinks you might like. Thank you very much. And